In the mid-1980s, Paul Newman was at the height of his career. Movie star, stunningly handsome, race car driver. He was America's darling. Half a world away, a child named Kennedy Odede was born in one of the most horrific slums in Africa, facing a life of despair that promised to be mercifully short. The two would never meet and could not be more dissimilar, but they shared a motivation to make the world a better place. Their efforts started off almost unwittingly but they would both go on to create grassroots efforts that would give help and hope to those who needed it most. My name is Kennedy Odede. I come from Kenya. For Kennedy, it all started with a soccer ball he bought for the children in Nairobi, who had nothing. His goal was to organize young people and to make them believe that they could change their life opportunities. For Paul Newman, it started with salad dressing he mixed up in his basement. We started passing the salad dressing out at Christmas time, singing Christmas carols, and about six weeks later, people were knocking on the doors asking for refills, so we decided to go into business. He really thought of it as a, a joke, if you will, but it was great, great food. A joke with a serious mission, to donate all the profits to charity. From the very beginning, anytime people said you couldn't do whatever we were going to do, Newman's attitude was, screw them, that's the way we're going. So we were constantly against the time. The moment it made money, that's when he said, this is, this is crazy. Uh, this is just pure luck. Let's give it all away. It was 1982, and the concept was revolutionary. Start a company, make products that are incredibly good, and then give away all the profits. It worked so well that by 2005, Newman needed a structure to carry out his mission. That's me. Newman's own foundation funds programs that carry out Paul Newman's legacy of giving. Programs that support nutrition, philanthropy, children, and empowerment. Programs like the one Kennedy Odede was trying to build in Africa. Kabir is a slum outside of Nairobi. It's a million people in an area the size of Central Park. It's the largest slum in Africa. There's no water, there are no police, there are no roads. There's grinding poverty. And this is where Kennedy came from. One day he took 20 cents he had extra and he bought a soccer ball and he used it to start a soccer league as a way of building a community organization. I think each step of the way he just thought, maybe we should try this, maybe we should try that. It was the genesis of Shining Hope for Communities, an organization that got its financial footing from Newman's own foundation. One of the things that the foundation looks to support is what we call the power of one. And it shows how one person working with others really can make a difference. Paul Newman did it, and you don't have to be a world famous actor like Paul Newman, you could be a street child from Africa's largest slum. Paul Newman believed that every person has the power to make a difference, and it all begins with luck. I'm a great believer in luck and the extraordinary role that that plays in all of our lives. Good luck, bad luck, medium luck. Paul Newman had seen combat and felt lucky to have survived. The same was true for retired Staff Sergeant Michael Malarcy. December 2nd, I deployed to Kandahar province in Afghanistan. We were there for almost a full month. One, two, set. January 3rd, our foot patrol was ambushed. Multiple IEDs, small arms fire.
I was injured in the first blast. We ended up kind of a 13-man patrol, losing four, having six wounded. Woke up a week and a half later in Washington, D.C., learned that I was going to be totally blind and, and had to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. During those first few days, I remember being lost and not having any clue what I was going to do. But the same day that I heard about the patrol, what happened to, to the guys, I had four friends that aren't coming back at all, and I was not going to insult them by feeling sorry for myself. I realized how fortunate I was to be alive. Like Paul Newman, Mike Malarcy wouldn't give up easily. I started asking about guide dogs. I knew from early on, I said, I want one of those. How do I do that? The VA and others try very hard, but unfortunately, our government will not pay for the guide dog. How do we help deal with this issue, and how do we do it in a model way that will make a statement for others? And the light bulb went on, and I said, we have Fidelco. Fidelco has been serving our country's military heroes and veterans really for over five decades. But the demand is increasing now because of the current theaters of a war in Iraq and Afghanistan. It was the beginning of November when I sent my application in. And in January, actually on the one year anniversary of losing my eyesight, Exxon showed up on my doorstep. It was like Christmas. And he gave me back the confidence to get out and just to try anything, to put myself out there. It was just amazing to be that mobile again. The Newman's Own Foundation and every other donor that's in this room tonight and that has ever donated, I, from personal experience, can promise you that the things that you do change lives. And it is a true blessing to have people like you care so much about people like us. I thank you very much. I hope the Newman's Own Foundation not only paid entirely for Exxon, for Michael's dog, they have funded a total of five guide dogs that we will place with military personnel or their immediate family members. What I believe is in the heart of our relationship with the Newman's Own Foundation is that we make significant improvements in our clients' lives by partnering them with a guide dog. And I believe that's what Mr. Newman was aiming for, to improve society by giving it all away. Mike Malarcy is paying it forward. Working with Fidelco, he convinced former Senator John Kerry to introduce the Senior Airman Mike Malarcy Act to generate grant money for service animals. And it's given me the hope that I can continue to help others have opportunities like I've had to help other people enjoy their lives. He writes a blog to help others as well. I started this website and actually called it How to Be Blind because I wanted to teach people how to use accessible technology, how to enjoy life, how to get out and just be normal. I actually get asked a lot, if you could go back, would you not go on that patrol, would you not cross that bridge? But as far as my own life, what happened to me, I wouldn't change anything because it changed my perspective on my life from being focused on myself to realizing what was important, which is family. Exxon is a big part of that family. And so is a woman named Jessie, the widow of one of his buddies killed in the IED explosion. She had come to visit him in rehab. Now, I'd always heard people talk about the love at first sight kind of a thing, and I always thought that was stupid. But that was exactly what happened to both of us. Now, I've got a wife and kids now that I wouldn't have had. I've got this dog that has absolutely changed my life. Mike now works for Fidelco, helping the organization raise funds for more guide dogs for the blind. It really has been amazing how many doors have opened just because of a little effort and a little bit of help from an amazing dog. Michel Nishan had setbacks of a different kind in his life. He grew up poor and struggled as a young musician. But his innate passion for food landed him in some upscale restaurants. 
and he went on to become a celebrity chef and restaurateur. Yet he longed for a way to provide fresh, wholesome food to everyone, not just the white tablecloth set. Nell Newman and I have known each other much longer than I knew Paul. And I got the call from her one day saying, my dad wants to open a restaurant, can you please help me? Paul Newman convinced Nishan to meet with him at the Westport Playhouse. We walked into the Playhouse, up to the mezzanine, and he had two chairs facing each other and had somebody unscrew all the lights in the ceiling except for the light over the two chairs. <laughs> and he made me sit down across from him and he said, would you, would you just do this damn restaurant with me? And by that time, I had completely fallen in love with the guy and said yes. Nishan wanted the restaurant to help support his passion. Farmer's markets in the parking lot, helping people living in poverty figure out common sense ways to make healthier food choices and to get more local food. How do you deal with access and affordability? So when I told the story to Paul about the things that make me tick, he said, what are you waiting for? Found a nonprofit. Wholesome Wave, we really believe that people living in poverty can become heroes of a changed food system because they will buy locally grown fruits, vegetables, and other healthful agricultural products if they can afford to make that choice. One of its programs doubles the value of food stamps when someone buys local produce at farmer's markets. Another allows participants to get prescriptions from their health care providers to purchase fruits and vegetables. We've proven that people living in poverty want to feed their families well. And through this program, when they do it, when they make that healthier food choice and it's locally grown fruits and vegetables, it's direct support for small and mid-sized farmers. It's really pretty cool. What we like is that Wholesome Wave works by really directly helping a group of beneficiaries and at the same time can help change policy. And we also have this investment program that really wants treasury money, farm credit, social venture finance funds actually go to rebuild the types of businesses that can provide the types of jobs that can eliminate poverty in the first place. There'll be uh, a couple more for winter storage. Paul Newman would no doubt be proud to see his love of food and the success of the Newman's own products transformed into providing quality food to those who need it most. He had an incredible palate. He had a, a real deep understanding of different kinds of ingredients in food. Everybody grab right. a fork here. Dig in. Here's a guy who loved neighborliness who loved recipes like pot roast and chicken pot pie and things done simply that taste really well. It's more than just about money and writing a check and giving it to a charitable cause and feeling good about yourself. It's about how money can change the world if it goes to the right hands and the right ideas with the right backup supports. Newman's Own expanded its reach by creating more and more products from salad dressings and salsa to popcorn, pasta sauce, and frozen pizza. People loved them, and the increased revenue meant more money for charity. Back in Kibera, Kennedy Odede's efforts were growing as well. Wesleyan University student Jess Posner had heard about Kibera and decided she wanted to help. So she moved there to live with Kennedy and his family. When I first lived there, people would come to Kennedy's house and knock on the door to see if I was still alive because they thought because I was white, I would just die living in their conditions. And there was a real moment of kind of shared humanity because they saw that, you know, we're all the same. If they can survive there, I can survive there. But the reality is nobody should have to live in conditions like those. Jess and Kennedy had big ideas. They looked to Rob Rosenthal at Wesleyan for guidance. Kennedy and Jess came to me and they said, we have this great idea, we're going to apply for this money, we're going to start a school for girls in Kibera. And we're going to get $10,000 and we're going to build a school. And I told them, well, $10,000, you can't build a school for $10,000. When he said you can't do this, we said, just wait, watch. <laughs> Check, 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 check
With the $10,000 in seed money generating other support, they built a school for girls to begin to lift the community out of poverty. It was just the first step. If you change the life of one girl, great. If we change the face of urban poverty, greater. But there's something inherently important about each single person who's infected and that their story, the story of one person, is as important as the story of thousands. Kennedy Odede feels the same way. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. But if you're blessed, what's next? That's the question. No? He's an airhead. He's an airhead. For Kennedy and Jess, a school for girls wasn't enough. After that, we built our health clinic. It's a primary care facility that also specializes in women and child health care. The resources from Newman were crucial, but also the notice that we got in getting the grant from Newman just vaulted us into a, a different level of notice among other funders in the United States. They came to us and said, we would like to name something for you. We built a toilet, which is named for Paul Newman. Bob always says he thinks he would have liked that. <laughs> and then we built our water towers. And then we also have two community centers and 12 toilets that we've now built throughout the community as a whole. My dream was to get an education, which was impossible because of poverty. As Shining Hope started to grow, Kennedy received a scholarship to attend Wesleyan University, becoming the first person from Kibera ever to go to college. In the first couple of weeks, when there were meals, when it was mealtime, he would sort of start running towards where we have the food, and he would say to Jessica, come on, they'll be out of the food. She would say, Kennedy, they don't run out of the food. It'll be there. Shining Hope is a really great example of the kind of work that the Foundation supports and what we're seeking. It's a small organization that's poised for growth. It's a phenomenal success. We were two young kids who had this idea, who knew it was needed, who saw the people it was impacting. And to have an organization like Newman's Own look at us and say, we, we believe in you. Here is our support for Shining Hope, just a life-changing moment. All of it is in line with their philosophy, which is the way in which you deal with poverty and the way in which you deal with gender inequality is to combine the two. From the very beginning, they said, we're going to wrap services for the entire community around that school. But I think a lot of funders want to know, can we replicate it in other places? We're looking at building another site in another slum, and then probably another one after that, but really looking at how we can leverage and scale the impact of what we've done and what we've learned to really look at the larger problem of urban poverty. I think Paul could be really happy to see what we are doing. Right now, Shining Hope helps more than 50,000 people with 124 staff members. But its reach goes far beyond the numbers. One of the focus areas of the foundation is empowerment. And we love the fact that their model is truly empowering the people within Kibera to think about their community and improvements that they would like to see and then make it happen. And for Jess and Kennedy, guess what else? I think Kennedy and I probably fell in love when we first met. I fell in love with him and fell in love with his community through him. And so we've been very lucky to be able to share both growing an organization and growing a life together. If I could meet Paul Newman, I think I would just thank him for his generous spirit and for, I think, making the world a more generous place. That spirit is something that really just inspires me every day and I think inspires a lot of people. You don't have to be rich to do good. You don't have to be poor to do good. It is your heart. This is Paul's heart. This is Kennedy Odede's heart. And what they believe in. And they know they are lucky. 
and they have to do something with that. We're really proud to carry forward that legacy. Paul Newman's legacy is probably felt the strongest at the camps he started for children with serious illnesses. Paul founded a camp in Connecticut in 1988 uh, because he felt strongly that kids who suffer from the conditions of their own illness and their families needed some place to go to have fun, to kick back and raise a little hell. The camps are part of the Serious Fun Children's Network. That was Paul Newman's expression of what camps should be. His most favorite place to be in the world, except for maybe a racetrack, was the camps. He was the most relaxed. The kids just treated him like this wonderful person who had created lemonade and popcorn and, and a beautiful space for them to hang out and do crazy things and be a kid. And from that original camp, the Serious Fun Network has grown to include 14 full member camps and 13 partner camps, serving 50,000 children and their families around the world every year. Our camps serve every conceivable serious medical condition. Cancers, blood diseases, HIV AIDS, craniofacial difficulties, it's always free of charge, does not matter where they come from, what their background is. He wanted every child who needed and wanted this experience to be able to get it. I think the best thing that they get out of camp is the interaction with their peers. There's an amazing medical presence there that allows them to do all types of stuff, whether it's swimming in a pool or playing baseball archery, fishing, balloon rides, you name it, one or more of our camps has found it. We encourage their parents who are intensively engaged with these kids to go find something else to do for a week. The camps were started by Paul Newman, and Newman's own foundation continues to be a supporter, but it's more than money that keeps them going. We engage 18,000 volunteers across the world every year. The experience for them and the emotional connection for them is almost as powerful as the effect on the kids themselves and their families. That was fun. <laughs> That's fun. It isn't just the kids that get an amazing experience and a chance to just be a kid. All the volunteers, all the doctors, all the nurses, these people come back every year. Bushy tail. The bushy tail. Do you want to sing? Do you want to do it? No, not today. They're part of something bigger, carrying forward Paul Newman's vision. It is such an incredible honor to even be given the chance to keep his legacy going. Ooh, that that chance good. is given to thousands of people every year driven by the millions of dollars in contributions given through Newman's own foundation. In the United States, we have this wonderful, wonderful nonprofit philanthropic sector, but what really makes it grow are the models, the other people who have demonstrated to future generations. People like Jess and Kennedy, organizations like Wholesome Wave, Fidelco, and Serious Fun. I think Kennedy and Jess are part of a next generation of social entrepreneurs who are really tackling some of the most entrenched social problems that we face globally. One of our girls the other day said she wanted to start a school for girls like me, um, which was sort of an amazing thing to say. And another said, well, I don't want to do that. I want to be a banker but I'm gonna sponsor a lot of girls to go to school. Paul Newman would be proud. One day he said to me, Forrester, what's gonna happen when I conk? Those were his exact words. And I said, well, I don't know. I said, but if you conk first and you come back 10 years later and you walk into Newman's own, um, you may not know the people there, you may not even understand fully what they're talking about, 
but you'll absolutely approve of how it feels. I realized how really involved my parents were in the things that they cared about. They didn't just, you know, kind of send a check, that they were like out there and made time, no matter how busy their schedule was, it just didn't matter. You don't have to go and start an organization. You can work for an organization, but you can also just be a movement builder. We can do good no matter where we are. In your office, as a lawyer, as a doctor, you can be nice to patients. That's good, you know. People really can make a difference. You just have to have a vision, a passion, and completely ignore anybody who tells you you can't do it. One candle, just one light, and the light starts growing on, you know, and shines the rest. That's what I believe in. What could be better than to hold your hand out to people who are less fortunate than you are? That's simply the way I look at it. They say I must be one who wonders God's own creation. And as far as they see, they can offer no explanation. Do you have a favorite Newman's Own product? Absolutely. The balsamic vinaigrette. Newman's Own organic popcorn. I can eat five bags of it. The tequila lime salsa is my favorite salsa. Oh, what's your favorite Paul Newman movie? Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. The Verdict. It has to be Butch Cassidy. Road to Perdition. The Hustler. The New Kind of Love, which is incredibly funny. And I still watch that all the time. No, 